Hey everybody, hope you're doing good. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Drop a like, subscribe, press the bell icon if you like the content. Check out the top right eye for even more nice links. Today is a little bit of an optimization video for enemy and tile map enemy system. So what we're going to do is we're going to be adding a despawn timer for enemies. If they're off screen a certain amount of time, they will be despawned. And that is really good because we really want to optimize this, this vector that we have with active enemies. And it can really get full very quickly if we don't kill the enemies and we just leave them hanging around. Things will spawn and keep spawning and keep spawning so for that optimization to happen we need a little basic very basic timer just like we have with the damage timer in enemy.h and all enemies are going to have this despawn functionality that's why we're putting it in the base class here let's go ahead and do a sf clock despawn timer and sf int 32 despawn timer max and these are not going to reset in themselves like we do in other functions what's going to happen is we're just going to check if this is done constantly as soon as it's done our enemy will be removed but we're going to be resetting it constantly as long as the enemies within the view or the window so it's going to be a little a little easier that way it's going to be a little different let's go ahead and do this const bool get despawn timer done const and it's, it's going to check just what the thing that we're, we're looking for return despawn timer that get elapsed time as milliseconds is greater or equal to this despawn timer max we haven't really set anything for this through the uh, through the tile map editor, but we're gonna do that eventually. Let's go to the CPP file anyway, and let's just define it hard coded in here. Despawn timer max is gonna be something very low right now, just because we're testing. And there you go. Now we have a despawn timer that we can check and play around with. What we need to do is we need a way to check if we're inside the view or not. So then the thing is, we're gonna have to add a view parameter, SF view, SF view reference view and we can set this as a const as well because we're not going to be changing this now we want to get this view in everything that's why i'm putting it in entity we're going to have to put it everywhere entity cpp as well go down to your update sorry it wasn't there we need to go to our player here here we have an update and we're just going to place it right here in the update function the header and then in the cpp file as well it's going to show up right here so you'll see where it is and then enemy.h right there and enemy.cpp if we don't do this correctly what's going to happen is that enemy.cpp doesn't have an update by the way if what's going to happen is that it's the the class that doesn't inherit this properly is going to become an abstract class itself and sometimes that can cause big errors so you need to make sure you're doing it correctly and everywhere where it's required otherwise it's going to say that you haven't overridden the update function properly let's go to rat.h go to the update function place it right in there rat.cpp as well update and i will be able to access this now the place where i'm going to do this is obviously in the rat.update because i'm going to use this view in a certain way here but a cool thing we can do is we can se separate this since this is going to be a, something that's going to be in enemy at all times we can actually go ahead and define this function in enemy.cpp right here remove the equals zero and just define it right here so this will be our enemy update if this sorry enemy update if this get position, we'll do a simple test here. If this get position.x is less than view.getCenter.x minus, let's say 100, as long as it's within that section of the screen, we're going to keep resetting the timer. Despawn timer.restart. And there you go. Now you're like, how am I going to call this enemy update when it's already overriding it in rat? Well, what you can do is you can do this enemy update. So we'll call the enemy's basic update function first, and then we're going to go ahead and do everything else that has to do with rat. So this is pretty cool. I bet you guys didn't know you could do this. If you did know, you're amazing. Mouse plus view and then view. And now we have some basic functionality for enemies called here. So we don't have to hard code that all the time in the other ones. We can just call this. Now when we're checking this, we can just go into our game state and we can just check it and remove stuff that we don't want. Of course, we're going to have to send in this view here and also for the player update, this view. There you go. Once that's done, we can start removing the enemy in case it's outside of the whole thing. And here, just gonna check for the timer, else if enemy get a damage timer done or despawn timer done, make sure you get the right one here. Otherwise you're gonna have a lot of problems. So get despawn timer done. And in here, we're gonna just remove the enemy straight up. No issues, just like that, boom. And we're gonna write a continue after this. And the same thing here, we're gonna remove that and we're just gonna say continue. I usually don't use continue, but 
in this case it will be a little easier i like this a little more the thing that happens with continue is whenever you use it it will skip whatever is after it and just go up to the next iteration instead of having to play around with this dangerous index variable it's a little easier for us to do it this way there you go guys now we have a damage timer or a despawn timer <clears throat> and it should run shouldn't be any problem and you'll see the enemies will despawn whenever they are on this side of the screen yeah, so in case you're confused, I removed the minus 100 here. What's happening is we're not allowing the enemy to despawn as long as it's on the left side of the screen. So whenever this is the enemy is on the left side of the screen, it will not despawn because we're cont continuously despawning or restarting the despawn timer. But as long as it will be on the right side of the screen, it will start or will keep running the despawn timer down until it reaches the max value and then will despawn the enemy. So there you go. Now we're gonna use the distance between the enemy and the center of the view to see how far away we're gonna despawn or how far away we'll allow the enemy to despawn. The thing is, if we have it too short, the thing that's going to happen is the enemy is going to spawn and it's going to wait for you a little off screen and it's going to despawn before you ever reach the aggro point. So it's just going to spawn and despawn. So we need to find a sweet spot where we allow the enemy to exist on a good portion of outside the screen. And so you want to go off screen, come back, maybe kill it later and stuff like that. It shouldn't be too short, but it shouldn't be too far. Remember, it's an open world game. So we want to make sure we find a really good sweet spot. Well, let's do this first of all. Let's go ahead and do use our new vector function that we created. Vector distance. So if the vector distance of this get position and view dot get center, that length is greater than say, uh, I don't know, the view size, maybe a thousand dot F. Just try this out out then we'll keep restarting it or if it's less than a thousand sorry now a thousand is quite a bit and if you stay on screen if, if the this enemy stays on screen here nothing's gonna happen we'll spawn that enemy nothing's gonna happen as well so we're not killing the enemies as they're spawning off screen that's great now i'm gonna move off to a long far away distance here a thousand away something like that i'm just gonna chill here i'm gonna see how many of the enemies are still left as i come back now i have this little dude left here and everything else kind of despawns. So a thousand might be a little too close, but that allows us to have some optimization. It's a little better for our system. This dude just spawned, so he just showed up here. But that's a little better. You can tweak this as you want. I'm probably gonna set this to 1,500. Since we have good computers, we don't really need to have that much optimization. I mean, 1,500 is good. You can have quite a bit of enemies on screen and still chilling. And then once they get off that distance, they will start despawning. I have a few more things I wanna do. The enemy is fine now, but our enemy tile, enemy spawner tile isn't really doing what I want it to do. And so a little unoptimized so i'm going to open both of these i'm going to close all i'm going to go in here and i'm going to start off by removing bool spawn or i can rename it actually we're going to rename it to first spawn so i'll explain this in a bit we'll have first spawn here what we're going to do is we're going to optimize this a little bit we're going to remove get spawned and we're going to keep these two and get s string we're going to remove set spawned as well and can spawn instead of that we're going to add a function const bool get spawn timer const we're not gonna have const sorry we're gonna keep it like that we do have a spawn timer and a spawn timer max which is great let's define this beautiful function and go to the cpp file we can remove these things here i'm just gonna copy paste basically just gonna copy this c and i'm gonna remove all of this and in get spawn timer we're gonna do our classic thing that we usually do we're gonna create an if statement which checks if the elapsed time of seconds is greater than enemy time to spawn and we're gonna just return true here but before we do that we're gonna restart the timer so this enemy spawn timer dot restart and what we need to do is set first spawn to false because once this is hit once it's gonna be false remove get spawned as well from the cpp file and i want to just comment out a few things here i want to comment out this ss string c out and go to your update function and remove the whole thing here we don't want any of that as we go up to the constructor we're gonna see the spawn flashing red so i'm just gonna say this first spawn equals true so this is true as soon as our enemy spawns the first dude this is gonna be set to false and it's gonna remain false and that's because we don't want to wait for the timer to reach the max before our first enemy is spawned and this will be a little more of an optimization this is also an optimization we're incrementing enemy counters here with one and decreasing them with one that means that we don't need all of these if else checks what we can do is we can just go ahead and do this and we can only increase it if it's less than enemy amount and we can only decrease it if it's greater 
than enemy counter. It will never go below zero and it will never go above enemy amount. It will become equal to, but it will never go below or over. It's a little more of an optimization. Now we haven't used the first spawn and I'm gonna do that right here. I'm gonna make an or statement and I'm gonna say if this first spawn is true, then we're gonna ignore all this. So it will spawn my dude no matter where the timer is if the first spawn variable is true. Now let's go down to our tile map.cpp where we're updating, update tiles. Go down to here and you'll see that we have a not get spawn. It's very strange. That's why I needed to fix this, is optimize all this because it was very strange behavior. Here we're gonna do get spawn timer and we're also gonna check if the counter is less than enemy amount, amount of enemies that are spawned. We're gonna remove that set spawn and we're gonna remove this C out as well. And there you go, very, very simple. We're gonna be in enemy spawner creating the enemy and the thing that happens there is, is good to know because we might work with this soon again. If you open up enemy system.cpp you'll see that we're increasing the enemy counter and we're decreasing at any time we remove an enemy. So that is keeping track of how many enemies are in from that spawner or in the active enemies array at any one time. Let's run this, shouldn't get any errors. Boom. And then we have one enemy spawn directly, no more. One enemy spawn here as well. If I kill these, obviously after a little while, they'll start spawning again. So I waited for a little while and after a while, the second enemy spawn, I have a, I have a minute set, like I said, so that takes a while, but it's working fine. It's a little more optimized now, a little better done. And we have a lot more things going for us now. And hopefully you're enjoying it. Hopefully you're enjoying coding this game. So thank you guys for sticking with me. Thanks for having patience with these polished videos. It's not all that fun, I know, but we're getting very close to starting off with some item drops and inventory stuff. So it's gonna be really fun. So stick with me guys. Hopefully you'll enjoy the next video just as much. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.